Okay, I went out to have, uh, I was gonna go for a trip to wash the car because I haven't washed it for a while. And then uh, it's Friday today. And it was, the car has been standing here since uh, Sunday when I last drove it. Now when I came, the battery was completely depleted. So I managed to get in through the trunk, open the trunk and then now it's on the trickle charger. Uh, but it's making this very strange clink, clink, clink. I don't know if it's good for you. everybody welcome to anything that moves I'm Thomas or should I say anything that doesn't move still Thomas uh, this week has not really been a good week from a uh, uh, perspective of a car ownership for me Tuesday I went to uh, another garage that we're renting uh, to our Volvo V70 2002 year model which has been uh, well laid off, laid up last 13 months because we haven't really needed it. So I left it there in December 2019, and I left it with on the trickle charger. Uh, I went and started up, but it didn't start. I mean, the starter worked perfectly, but you know, it just didn't start. The car didn't start, so I thought, oh shit, what is this? And then I saw that the, there is no fuel on the meter. I remember parking it with about half, you know, half tank or something like that. So obviously there's some kind of fuel leak. Now, the uh, problem is that I, when I parked it, because it's a shared garage, so you share it with one other uh, car owner. Uh, so I parked it as close as possible to the to the wall when I parked it. So basically it's just this this uh, distance between the wall and, and the filling cap. So there's no way of... of uh, refueling the car from inside the garage. Uh, what was more disturbing is that the other day when I went to take the Stelvio to the car wash, to the manual car wash, that car was completely dead when I got there. It had been standing for about four days. Within those four days I'd actually been in the car, just sit, you know, uh, went out to sit in it for a while <laughs> and uh, maybe two days before this happened and then it was completely fine. Uh, so the battery was depleted. I have the trickle charger, so I connected the trickle charger with a fast connection. But uh, what happened was it just started. It was just um, you know it would just tick, uh, as you could see in the intro. Intro. What happened then? Well, I, f I figured after about 15 minutes, I figured this is not good. So I disconnected the battery from the, uh, the the charger and the battery, and then I put the charger on the. Uh, battery without being without the battery being connected to the to the car so let's see now it, I saw this morning that it was finally I did this um, recondition cycle and uh, I saw this morning that it was finally fully charged after about 36 hours so it took quite a long time but the battery is quite big but anyway so my hopes are now that the when I connect it, it will get enough uh, uh, voltage for the uh, electronics and the electric system whatever to to work fine and then I'll just start it and see what happens uh, there are some in, uh, initializing procedures you have to do when you have the battery disconnected I'll uh, go through them as much as I know if I get the car started and if it works if it works as it should but uh, let's see okay so let's see um. Alright, so here she is. Trickle charger, you can see it's gone through all the cycles. It's now on the on the seven. This means that it's fully charged. It's been on recondition, so the stage six is the recondition mode. But anyway, uh, let's disconnect the charger. Open the trunk. Uh, so what I'll do normally I have it connected to this fast uh, connector here. Uh, this fast connector here uh, that I have here, but as I said, it didn't work well because it was just ticking. It was too low voltage, I guess, on the on the battery. So 
I will now disconnect the uh, the charging uh, cables. Uh, there we go. There we go. So it's all disconnected uh, here. So now it will immediately start making some kind of noise, I guess. Okay, very good, it's connected. Uh, oh, tie it too hard, it should be a little bit hard so it doesn't fall off, okay. We don't seem to have any of this problem with it. We have the light, but it's not ticking like it did before, so I have high hopes that it will work now. Let's see. Ah. This one back in place. Okay, so there are some initializing procedures that you have to go through. Uh, you have to unlock and lock the car uh, to reset the all the, the trunk and the doors. So I unlocked, now I lock it again. Okay, so let's see what happens. At least the mileage is still there. Apparently what you're supposed to do is that you're supposed to first start it without starting it, just like doing this. Then we can turn off this. And then AST, yeah, that's the one. ESC. These are all the warnings that will come up. Okay. Alright. And then let's start it. And within 30 seconds I should turn full locks. Should be it. Let's see. Now, as I said, there are some warnings, so uh, let's see what happens if I stop it. But uh, All right, put it in park. So another thing that it said it should be should be doing you should manually all the windows you have to manually take up one by one. I don't really know why to get the automatic function working. So I'll go around the car now and do it on each individual door. I've been driving 10 kilometers. I initialized the steering uh, lock to lock and I restarted the car once and that basically uh, got all the warnings uh, all the warnings disappeared from the dash. Now it's only the slippery road icy road warning that is comes from <coughs> the temperature. Now all the, these um, uh, uh, trip data actually went away, but I went through all the menus and it seems as if the in the infotainment system and it seems as if the basically all the other settings I had with you know passive entry and everything seem to be uh, as as they were before. I've tried the different uh, driving modes, advanced efficiency not yet. I will come to that and I've tried everything. So everything seems to be working fine, uh, which for which I'm very happy. I just have a little bit of a, I'm a little bit concerned about a battery, you know, if it's, uh, if it's really good or not. Ah, one thing I can mention is that you know, if you even if you're in automatic mode, you can always make it shift 
uh, downshift or upshift, whatever. If you want to do it, if you want to do it, you know, to engine brake or to if you think that you know it's in a too low gear. But the thing is, it's gonna after a while, it's gonna return to the preferred gear of that driving mode.